Man, between Arjuna and Romulus, the Lost Belts really seem to like giving older servants huge makeovers. Hello everyone, Sobro Nee of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the only servant guaranteed to make a roman out of you, Romulus. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively, and a grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to shout your best Roma, Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Romulus' stats. Romulus has a max HP of 13,632 and a max attack of 12,273, which becomes 12,886 due to his Lancer class modifier. His HP is surprisingly tied for the lowest among all SSR Lancers, however Romulus makes up for it by having the second highest attack in his class. His attack is also very high for an SSR servant overall, while his HP is just a little bit above average. When it comes to his command cards, Romulus has 4 hits on his quick card, 3 hits on his arts, 3 hits on his buster, and 5 hits on his extra card. He has an NP gain rate of 0.59% and a star rate of 12.2%. Both his star generating and NP gain are a little bit above average despite his buster focused deck, mostly due to his good hit counts. Romulus's stat spread overall is heavily offensive, but he isn't lacking in defense or utility either. Taking a look at his skills, Romulus's first skill is Throne of Curious rank EX. It increases the party's attack and crit damage for 3 turns, both between 10 and 20%, and it further increases the crit damage of Roman allies for 3 turns by an additional 20-30%, to 30%, all of these depending on level. The skill will also inflict the Roman trait debuff on all enemies for 5 turns. His second skill is Apotheosis, rank B. It grants him 2 hits of invincibility, lasting for 3 turns, grants him 10 crit stars, and charges his NP gauge between 20 and 30%, depending on level. And finally, his last skill is 9 lives Roma, slaying the 100 heads Roman style, rank A. It increases his own buster card effectiveness for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%, and it also increases his crit star absorption rate for 1 turn, between 300 and 500%, both depending on level. In addition, every time Romulus crit an enemy, he will inflict the Roman trait debuff for 5 turns. As for his passives, Romulus has Magic Resistance rank A, which increases his debuff resist by 20%, Independent Action rank B+, which increases his crit damage by 9%, and Divinity of the Chief God rank B+, which increases his own damage by 235, and his Buster card effectiveness by 9%. Romulus has a Buster Arts deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Per Aspera Ad Astra, which is an AoE Buster attack that deals damage to all enemies with between a 300 and 500% damage modifier depending on level. It also deals an additional 20% damage to Roman enemies for each stack of the Roman trait that they have. This Noble Phantasm will also inflict all enemies with the Roman trait debuff and all allies with the Roman trait buff, as well as increase the party's attack for 3 turns between 10 and 30% depending on overcharge. When it comes to Romulus' ascension mat requirements, you'll be happy to know that he doesn't need any bronze mats. For level ascension, he'll require 9 Yadrissal Seeds, 10 Giant Rings, 6 Spirit Roots, and 5 Eggs. Yadrissal Seeds are farmable at Fallen Babylon in Babylonia, where they have a 49% drop rate, Giant Rings have a 40% drop rate at the Giant's Flower Garden in Lost Belt 2, Spirit Roots drop at the Holy City in Camelot with a 12% drop rate, and Eggs are best farmed at the Vol in Lost Belt 4, where they also have a 12% drop rate. For skill leveling, Romulus is going to need 15 Giant Rings, 18 Yadrissal Seeds, 24 Divine Spheres, and 15 Fruits of Longevity. Spheres drop at the underground structure in Olympus with a 39% drop rate, and the Fruits have a 20% drop rate at the East Interstellar City, also in Olympus. Being pretty much the embodiment of Rome itself, I think it's fair to say that Romulus has a lot to live up to. And luckily for us, Romulus not only has the badass fashion sense of ancient Rome, but but the might of Rome as well. He has one of the highest attack stats of not just his class, but of SSR servants in general, especially when you factor in that generous class modifier that pushes his attack to nearly 13k. Romulus can do more than just punch hard though, as he does have a respectable amount of HP, NP gain, and star generating 
for his weight class. I'm not saying he's a tank or an NP looper or anything, but considering how much stat investment he has into his attack, he still manages to perform surprisingly well in every other area. So don't underestimate him. And that's a good thing too, because Romulus has a very unique playstyle that synergizes well with his offensive all-rounder stat spread. Because you see, Rome is not just a place for Romulus, it's a state of being. He is Rome, we are Rome, and soon our enemies will be Rome as well. And I mean that literally. His first skill, Throne of Tyrannus, inflicts all enemies with a Roman trait for 5 turns. It also increases the party's attack and crit damage by 20%, as well as an additional 30% crit damage for Roman allies. And herein lies Romulus' special gimmick. He can make his enemies and his allies into Romans via this special mechanic that he has on his skills and Noble Phantasm. Romulus' entire kit then revolves around buffing his fellow Roman allies and debuffing Roman enemies. And to that to that extent, this skill is very strong. Not only does it give him a guaranteed way of inflicting the Roman status on all his enemies whenever he wants, but it's also a powerful charisma that greatly bolsters the crit damage for the team. All of which is on a low cooldown, so you can keep this skill active for most of the battle. In fact, there is a 100% uptime on that Roman trait debuff. So theoretically, Romulus can keep this debuff on his enemies for the entire battle just with this skill alone. But it doesn't end there. His other skill, Nine Lives of Roma, buffs Romulus's Buster Card effectiveness, Star Absorption, and allows him to inflict additional instances of the Roman trait every time he crits an enemy. Yes, the Roman trait can stack up to 10 times, which will be important later. This skill is phenomenal for giving Romulus a ton more firepower, as well as a consistent way of critting. It works especially well in single target boss fights, because it allows Romulus to easily stack multiple Roman debuffs on one enemy. Before his eventual Noble Phantasm. And finally, his last skill, Apotheosis, is a defensive skill. It grants him 2 hits of invincibility, a 30% NP charge, and 10 crit stars. Defensively, this is a very good skill because invincibility is one of the best forms of hard defense available and it ensures that Romulus can survive most enemy noble phantasms. But this skill can also be used offensively to generate crit stars for feeding his 9 lives Roma skill and for charging his NP, so it is also an excellent setup skill as well. All of Romulus' skills are busted so there is flexibility in skill priority, but personally I would recommend Apotheosis first just for the NP charge, which is pivotal to Romulus' burst damage, followed by his Charisma-like skill and then the Buster buff last, both for additional damage. As for append skills, mana loading and extra attack are really the only ones worth taking. Romulus' Noble Phantasm is an AoE buster attack that deals additional damage to enemies with the Roman trait based on how many stacks they have, and it also increases the party's attack while applying the Roman trait to both allies and enemies. Romulus' Noble Phantasm is his bread and butter. Not only does it let him deal devastating burst damage to enemies, but it also supports his allies with additional attack buffs and crit buffs from his first skill. Now despite being an AoE Noble Phantasm, Romulus can use this to deal ridiculous single target damage as well, due to the fact that the Roman traits stack. For each Roman debuff an enemy has, this Noble Phantasm becomes 20% stronger against them. And as I mentioned earlier, it is very easy to stack 5 or 6 debuffs on a single enemy when you're using non lives Roma, which effectively makes Romulus' Noble Phantasm stronger than even most single target Noble Phantasms. And if you somehow manage to get 10 stacks, Romulus will hit even harder than Enkidu. So Romulus' damage potential is very high despite being AoE, and that allows him to function extremely well both as a farmer and as a main DPS in boss fights and challenge quests. If you've seen a lot of my spotlights, you've probably heard me mention Synergy as being one of the most important aspects of a servant's kit before. And nowhere is that better exemplified than in Romulus. Every part of his kit is designed to work together. His skills feed into buffing his Noble Phantasm, and his Noble Phantasm further buffs his skills and help set up his allies. So Romulus can snowball very hard, and he has very few weaknesses. He's not only a jack of all trades, but a master of them too. His DPS is on par with single target servants, both from his NP and his face cards. He has good enough NP gain and NP charge that he can farm effectively, and his party wide support skills give him good utility in any offensive team comp. So he's a great off support as well. Really, the only aspect of Romulus's kit that hinders 
notice him is that he does rely heavily on building up debuffs, which is a slow and grindy process. And it can also be countered by enemies who do have debuff immunity. Still though, Romulus is strong on pretty much any offensively constructed team, especially Buster crit teams where he can get most usage out of 9 lives Roma. So pairing him with crit star generating supports who can buff star absorb or crit damage like Brynhilda, Lancer Raiko, and Osakabe Hime are good go-to options. Bryn is excellent because she shares a class with Romulus and she can buff his star absorb and crit damage to ensure that he is constantly able to crit. While Osakabe Hime and Raiko are both good star generators that are also capable of directly buffing Romulus's NP damage as well. I also want to give a special shout out to Bodica as a top tier support for Romulus as well. Bodica herself is a very underrated servant who's actually a good all around support and soloer, but she also has a strong interaction with Romulus that is too good to overlook. You see, Bodica has a special party wide buff against Roman enemies, and that buff applies to Romulus's debuff as well. Essentially, whenever she's paired with Romulus, Bodica can give the entire party a whopping 60% special damage buff against all enemies, on top of granting the party arts, defense, attack, and crit buffs. So the Romulus and Bodica combo is similar to the Siegfried and George dragon combo, but on steroids. And it makes Bodica feel like a mini Mosh Merlin hybrid. Romulus's bond CE is towards the cosmos. It increases the attack of all Roman allies by 20%. It's very thematic, but not really the best CE for Romulus. Instead, stick with CEs that can either buff his buster card effectiveness and crit damage, or that give him starting NP charge for farming, like Victor from the Moon, Joint Recital, Aerial Drive, and Kaleidoscope. In the future, Like a Bird is also a great pickup as it not only buffs Buster and crit damage, but also generates stars as well. And any command code that increases Buster crit damage is also great for Romulus, like Mistress of Heaven. Overall, Romulus is without a doubt one of the strongest servants releasing this year. He is one of the few servants who can be both a strong wave clearer, thanks to his NP charge and AoE Noble Phantasm, while also being a top tier single target DPS. When he's able to get go and he can stack his Roman trait, Romulus is capable of almost unmatched damage output while still being able to provide buffs to support the team and remaining tanky enough to keep himself alive in even the most challenging content. He does struggle against enemies who can slow him down with debuff immunity, but short of that, he is an overwhelmingly strong servant. So Romulus gets an A plus from me. It's a shame that he does come out so close to Castoria, otherwise I would say rolling for him is a no brainer for almost everyone. But if you have the quartz to spare, you won't be disappointed. Romulus is a top tier servant in almost any scenario. And those are my thoughts on Romulus. He's also definitely one of the more fun servants to build around and experiment with, so if you're someone who likes to try off meta team comps, he's worth picking up for that as well. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our discord, chill with us on twitch, and follow us on twitter, all linked in the description down below and I'll see you all in the next servant spotlight so Brony out later